out there. Today we're talking about volume. You've heard the word volume used before. Typically it has to do with how loud something is. But today we're talking about a different kind of volume. It has to do with three-dimensional objects. Volume is the amount of three-dimensional space an object occupies. And although you can find the volume of any object, today we'll just be doing volume of rectangular prisms. Do you remember when we learned about area? Area is the number of square units needed to cover a two-dimensional shape. So if we wanted to find the area of the top of this prism, or any of its faces, we know how to do that. Do you also remember that area is a two-dimensional measurement and is measured in square units? So we used to talk about the number of square units needed to cover a given shape. Well, volume is a three-dimensional measurement, and it's measured in cubic units, so we'll be talking about how many cubes we need to fill a given space. So here we have a rectangular prism. If I want to know its volume, I'm going to need a bunch of little cubes, and I'm going to need to drop them in and count them. One, two, this is going to take a while. Let's just fill it on up. Okay, now I could start counting my cubes again, and that's one way to find the volume of this prism. But there's bound to be an easier way, right? Of course. So let's talk about that together. Here I have a prism, and I'm given two of its dimensions. Looks like the length and the width are both five units. So if I just wanted to know the area of the base of this prism, I know how to do that. I know that the area is just the length times the width. And I get my nice two-dimensional measurement of 25 square units. But what if I put in a layer of cubes, and I want to know what volume of the box is currently filled with cubes? Well, again, I could count them, but we're working on a different way. So I'm going to need to consider that I've added height. I had this two-dimensional measurement, just length by width, but now I'm adding a third dimension, and it's height. What is my height in this case? Well, it's just one layer of cubes, or one unit. So I can take my base layer, and just multiply it by the height, which is one unit. Now what if I add another layer? Well, that's just two units. Three units, four units, well you get the idea. Basically, I'm taking that area of the base and I'm multiplying it by the height. And this works to find the volume of any rectangular prism. We just take the three dimensions and multiply them. Sometimes you'll see this written as area of base times height which again, we know area is just length times width. For cubes, since all of the side lengths are the same, we can just multiply that value three times. Let's try an example. Here I'm given a rectangular prism and enough cubes to figure out all of its dimensions. So let's find those dimensions. Along the bottom here I have one, a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cubes. They're each one centimeter in length, so that dimension is eight centimeters. Along this side, I have one, two, three, four cubes, so that's four centimeters. And then going up two, three, four, four centimeters there. So there's your three dimensions to find the volume of this prism, multiply, and then you have your volume. Let's try another. Here we have a cube, and we're told that each little cube is one cubic inch. So again, let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six inches as my height. Since I know that all sides of a cube have the same measure, I know that the length and the width are also both six inches. Now I can just multiply that six inches three times, and I have the volume of my cube. That's all there is to it. You, too, can find volumes of rectangular prisms.